Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today, for this is the last show of the 22nd Joy of Painting series. So I tell you what, let's start out today and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with us. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got planned for today. Today, as you can plainly see, I have a canvas here that's painted with a black gesso. I've allowed it to dry completely, and then on top of that, I've put a thin, even coat of liquid clear. And we put the clear on there only because it makes putting transparent color on top of this much, much easier. You, you really don't have to have it, but it makes your life so much easier. Then on top of the clear, I've put a mixture of sap green, phthalo blue, and a little Van Dyke brown to dull it down. And I thought today we'd just do a happy little scene, maybe that's deep in the woods. I've had a lot of requests for paintings that have big trees in them, so let me just show you an easy, easy way to do just that. Let's take an old two inch brush today. Take the corner of it, just the corner, and go into a little bit of titanium white. And let's go up in here. Now once again, this has green and blue and a little brown on it. So color will just jump out at you. All you have to do is just take and put a little bit of white on there and watch what happens. It's beautiful, beautiful. And this is a fantastic painting to do as a demonstration for friends or relatives or just people who are gonna watch you paint. And don't let them see you put the color on. And they think you start with a black canvas and then you touch it with a little bit of white and they'll, they'll absolutely think that magic is happening. And you don't have to tell them any different. Let them, let them try to figure out how to do it. But these are truly a joy to do. And the black canvases might very well be my favorites. There. But just spin it and work it. Keep it going, move it. Just have fun with it. Just have fun with it. Let it go. There. Okay, I'm just keep adding a little touch of white here and there. And if we're gonna have deep, deep woods, this is a nice way of making a background. And maybe we'll put some big trees in here. This is a nice way of making a background that you can see between the trees. And it looks like a lot of things that are happening and you didn't have to hardly work at all to do it. And this is truly <laughs> the lazy man's way of painting. That's why I'm here. There. All right. Now then, a little bit more on this corner. And let's put a little over in here too. Be sure to leave some nice dark areas in here. Don't, don't just cover it all up. Don't cover it all up. And the other thing is you can do this with any transparent color or semi-transparent color. It doesn't have to be totally transparent, but semi-transparent. And the way to tell if a paint is transparent, what I do is just take a little put on my finger and touch the black. If it's transparent enough for this, it'll still look black. The canvas will still look black. You will know immediately whether it's transparent enough to do this. Some colors like the cadmium yellow, the white, are very opaque. Other colors are semi-transparent and some are very transparent. So test a little. You'll find exactly what you're looking for that way. All right. And we just sort of wind it up and play with it here and there. And when you're doing this, maybe it's a good thing to step back and take a look, see, and see what it looks like. And if it needs to be blended more, just blend it a little more. Sometimes you need to go back and add some little light spots, or you could even go back with the original color, the green and the blue, and, and put dark back in here if you wanted to. If you overdo this light, there. Just sort of wind it up like that. Okay, down here at the bottom, I want it to be much darker, so I'm not putting much color here. I want it to really look like it's far away. Something like that. All right, and very lightly, just brush across it. And that'll take out the brush strokes and let you sort of look at what you have. And if you have one that you don't like or it's too bright, you can change it. Or you can move it, anything that you want to do. Anything that you want to do on here. All right. Now then, maybe. Let's find an old fan brush today. Let's go right into a little touch of the little touch of the midnight black. Just load the brush full of color. And let's begin making a few trees in the background back here. 
in my mind, I see a tree, it lives right there. Just pull straight down, applying more pressure as you work down the tree. And that'll give you a nice trunk. That easy. That easy. It's the easiest kind of tree to make there is. Let's take a little white, a little white. Be right back, get a little touch of the bright red. Just a little. It's very, very strong. Eat up your whole world. Okay, now I'm going to get a little bit more paint. Put right here. And then that one, we'll put some of the thalo blue. Maybe even add a little black to that to dull it. That's better. Don't want it too bright. Use black to dull. There, all right. Now then, let me clean the old knife. In my world, today, I think the light is coming from the right. If you're right-handed, as I've mentioned before, you will probably find it is easier to have the light coming from the right side. So let's just start off here with a knife and just put the indication of a little highlight right on the edge here. There. Now then, a little bit of the bluish color I'll put on the back. Not a great deal. This is just to indicate a little reflected light. Okay. Now we can take a little bit of the pure black and just touch. All we're doing is just taking the knife and touching. Just touching. The canvas will pull off what it wants. And this way you can blend all those colors together and it will actually give this tree texture. When this painting is dry, you can actually feel bark on it. Of course, you can feel it while it's wet too, but it's gonna get all over your finger. <laughs> so, suggest you wait till it's dry. Let's take, let's take, get some paint thinner. We'll go right into a little bit of the black. A little black, pick up a little of that dark sienna there. And once in a while, even some of the Van Dyke brown, just to give it a little brownish flavor. Load that brush full of color, okay? Now then, we can put just the indication here and there, a few little limbs, just a few. Maybe these are evergreen trees out here, or whatever kind of trees you want. Shoot, giant redwoods maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Just trees, just friendly trees. There, a few little arms sticking out on him. Now then, we can take us a, well, here's one. We'll take us an old two inch brush. We'll put a little black on it. A little sap green, go right. Of course the black and yellow will make green. The black is, once again, just used to dull. Just push, tap a little color right on there. And maybe, on this little tree up here, there's a few little limbs, leaves that are hanging out here. Just use the corner of the brush and sort of tap some of these little rascals in. There. Just think about where little arms would stick out and little leaves would grow. It's the easiest way I've ever found of making very effective and gorgeous trees. There we are. It's one of the things when we're doing demonstrations for charity groups and PBS stations and stuff around the country, when people see the paintings that we do up close, one of the things that I always hear is I never realized there'd be that much detail in it when I saw it up close. So this really does work quite well. There really is an exceptional amount of detail in it, believe it or not. Tell you what, shoot, I just had another idea. Maybe, I'll show you a couple of tricks. Maybe, let's take, let's take, I get excited sometimes, I begin seeing things in here. I wanna put, yeah, watch here. Put a nice little bush right back here. And I want this bush to be in front of this tree. Show you how to push that little rascal right back in the woods. This bush, or collection of bushes, bushes, lives right there. I can't, maybe, Maybe there's another old bush that lives right here. Just sort of let your imagination go. Wherever. Wherever. Mm, he might even have a friend here. There. And maybe back here. Let's get crazy. Maybe. Watch it. Watch it. See here? Again, putting in all kinds of little areas. 
just sort of blend them together. And all I'm doing is just tapping down here and there, adding a little yellow ochre, a little Indian yellow, a little bright red once in a while. There. But not much of the bright red. I think I'll keep this mostly in the greens. Use the red to dull the green. Just to dull the green. There we go. Okay, we got a whole bunch of bushes. And maybe coming right down here. There's a couple of more. But see already that tree is being pushed back. I want to push it back into the forest. You didn't know you could move trees, did you? Or maybe you did. Hmm. There we go. Okay. Now, let's take, let's put some trees in the foreground and really push everything back. I'm going right back into the black here. Maybe, whoosh, be brave, right there beside. But the bottom of this one, I'm going to bring further down. So everything's behind it. Everything is behind it. This is a stronger tree, bigger. And it may just be that it's closer to you. And that's the kind of impression that we're trying to make here. That it's just closer to you. Maybe, maybe he's got a, a friend. Whew. Well, we said we was going to paint some big trees. I think, <laughs> I think these are big trees. Big, strong trees. Maybe, maybe we have a forest. And when you're doing yours, you decide how many paintings or how many trees you want in your painting. How many paintings you want in your tree. There we go. Either way, it works for you. <laughs> we can start a whole new kind of painting here. All right. And if you're really brave, you can put big trees in here. I mean, big, very strong tree. So wide is this? This is a number six fan brush, and as wide as that brush is, I'm gonna make this one. Yeah. Big old trees. Okay, put a little grass around the bottom of that one. Now then, let's go back to our color that we had here. This is a little bit of bright red and white. And just let it float right down the tree. This is just like you're laying snow on the mountain. Just let it break, grab. The canvas will literally pull off what it wants and give you back what's left. Just like a tax man when he does your taxes. There. But very nice looking, as I mentioned earlier. This will look like real bark when it's done. It'll feel like real bark. There. And you can make it as thick as you want. That's one thing that's so fantastic about oil paints. You can give texture to your painting. Of course, I guess you could do that with other paints. Just find it much easier with oils to do. There. A little hard to get watercolor to build up a quarter of an inch. <laughs> there. Mix up a little more color. And we'll give this old big tree here some. Something like that. There. But isn't that a fun way to paint big, strong trees? And you can do this, even if you've never painted before. This is one of the easiest, most effective ways of making large trees. Just, oh, it's a pleasure to make them this way. And they work. And people will never believe you've done this. Never believe it. They'll be looking for the numbers because they'll know this is a paint by number thing. There. Okay, now I'll take a little bit of that blue that we were using for reflected light, and I'm just going to let a little of that play down the back side. Just a little right down through there. There we go. A little bit here. Like so. And down. Oh, should have done so many trees. This is too repetitious. There. Of course, when you do yours, you decide how many trees you want to have in your world. Maybe you want fewer, more, 
somewhere in between. Doesn't matter. As long as it makes you happy when you do it. If painting does nothing else, it should make you happy. Go right back into some black. There, let me clean off the spot to work. <clears throat> back into the midnight black. And then once again, all I'm going to do, I'm just touching the canvas. That's all we're doing. Just touch. Get that little roll of paint and touch. It's so simple. I think, I think just about anybody could do this with never practicing even this particular part of it. Some things need a little more practice than others. But this one is very easy and very effective. That's the nice thing about it. A lot of things are easy, but they don't look good when you're done. <laughs> this looks good. This looks good. All right. There we go. So I say, this is the last show of the 22nd Joy of Painting series. It's almost unbelievable to me that we've done this many shows. With 22 series, that means there's almost 300 half-hour shows. Whew. That's unreal. That's a record that's absolutely unsurpassed in television history, and I'm very proud of that. And don't ever think that you do that many shows alone. There's been a lot of fantastic people that have worked with us to make it happen. People like my wife, Jane, Walt and Annette Kowalski, and the people here at the television station. It takes an effort on all of their parts to bring this to you. But most important is the fact that you watch the shows and, and, you, and you like them. That's what keeps us here. So if you hadn't seen all the shows, as I say, there's only 300 of them, and you want to, give your station a call. They're available to them. They're available. And if there's other things that you want to see in future series that we're not doing yet, drop me a line. Let me know what you want to see. And if I can't do it, I'll try to find somebody that can to bring them on as a guest artist. There. But we can get it. We can get it. Let's take a a little bit of black on the liner brush. And let's just go in here and put the indication back in here and there and here of some nice little limbs and branches that live back on these trees. There we go. And right in there. And in here. Now if you have trouble making this paint flow, add a little bit more paint thinner. I'm going to put a lot of leaves, I think, up there, so I'm not going to put every little stick and twig. Sometimes it's fun to not put many leaves and put a lot of little twigs. It makes an interesting painting. But it would be too boring for you to watch somebody sit here for 30 minutes just putting leaves and limbs on these trees. So we'll just put a few in, show you how to do it. And then when you do yours, you put as many in as you want. Good. Maybe. Here's an old one that hangs down and comes across. Don't have all of them just going right out from the side. Look like your tree has somehow been just cut off. Half of it's gone. We need branches that go in every direction. Some go behind the tree. Some come in front. Some are broken. Some are long. Some are short. They're like people. Everyone's different. And that's what makes everyone wonderful, is the fact that we're different. The fact that we're different. There. Okay. A couple more in here and there. Something like that. A little more of the paint thinner. A little more color. And maybe, we want this old big one left out. Maybe he's got a big old arm that comes out here. Like that. Like that. Let your hand wiggle and jiggle when you're doing this. Don't just make them all straight. Nothing's more boring than just perfectly straight tree limbs. Give them some character. There. There's another big old rascal. If these are a type of evergreen, evergreens seem to always have a lot of little broken limbs on them. That's where you always find little squirrels and stuff setting. Speaking of squirrels, I really hope you've enjoyed as many times as I've showed you Peapod, the my little squirrel in this series. I really hope you've enjoyed seeing him. It's my way 
of sharing nature with you and, and trying to make people aware that these little creatures are so fantastic and they need, they need our help and support if they're to survive. And you can, you can really enjoy some of God's creations by just looking out your window because it's unreal what's been done. And we have a tendency in our busy life to forget about these little creatures and to, to look over them. And my young friends tell me that they really like these little creatures. But I hope, I really hope that you enjoy them because they're, as I say, they're very special to me. Very special to me. But anyway, you know painters are sort of weird. They like, they like things like that. All right. You don't have to be a painter to like little creatures. Let's put a little grass down here in the bottom of this. Maybe we'll take it right on through there, wherever. A little yellow ochre, Indian yellow, cad yellow, sap green. Just mix them on the brush. Let all these little colors and things just happen. There we go. Wherever. Okay, I'm gonna put the least little touch of paint thinner on my brush. I just dip the brush into a small, small amount of paint thinner. Just to thin the paint a little bit more so it really slips off there easy. Now sometimes it's fun and makes your painting look a little better. Put some roots out here on the tree. Just take a fan brush and a little black paint, brown, whatever. And you put the indication here and there, just a big old root that grows right out. But don't put one on every single tree because you're not gonna see every tree. Some of them are gonna be covered up by grass or the things, that, little weeds that grow around here. Don't put one on every one, just here and there. There. Something about my cap. Okay, and we can go up in here. We we'll just use that same old brush, take a little, and begin thinking about where all these little pieces of foliage would live up in here. Things like this. But begin thinking about shape and form. Trouble making the paint stick. Add a little touch of the paint thinner to your brush. Just a little. There. See, here goes one right across the tree. There. Now this is really where the paint that you're putting on top of all this on the tree has to be thinner. If it's not, it's just gonna all mix together. And we don't wanna do that. We want it to stand out there and, and look good. There. Wherever. And you put as many as you want in yours. I'm just going to put a few here and there and let it go at that. There we go. Come on back down here to the bottom. <laughs> drive, drive the director crazy here running back and forth on this. All right. Little grassy areas. Nice little place. This is this would be just a fantastic place to come and walk. Take your shoes off and let your feet run naked through here. It feels good on the bottom of your foots when you when you run across all these little grassy areas. Alright. But look at the amount of distance that's already in there. Shoot, we got a big blank spot there. Let's do something. We got a minute left here. You know me. Yep, here we go. Another huge tree. Another huge old tree. We'll put him right in there. Right there. Maybe he comes right down to about like that. Give him a big old root hanging out there like that. Choo. There he is. Come back in with a little bit of a bright red, white, same thing. Choo. Just let that drop right down. Like there. Something like that. Okay. A little bit of a bluish color. Excuse my arm there. 
Just drop that right on down. There. A little bit of our black. And once again, all we're going to do here is just sort of touch. My cat. All right. Let's drop a few little branches on that. Don't want him left out. He needs some arms on him too. There. See, if we'd have known he was going to be there, we could have just put him in when we were doing the other ones. I just decided there should be something over here in this spot, too. There we go. Something like that. I'm going to take our brush. Once again, let's just tap a few leaves in here. So a big tree, it may not have many leaves down here. They're wee up high somewhere where the little squirrel lives. All right. Okay, now this would be, as I say, a beautiful place to take a walk in the woods. So let's have a, let's have a little path. We'll take a little dark sand, a little bit of white. Go right up in here and just take a knife and just rub. It'll pick up the color underneath and it'll sort of all blend together and put you in a happy little path. Just rub very strongly, very strongly. There we go. And that'll give us the indication of a little path it goes way back here in the distance. And with that, I think we're going to call this old painting finished. Once again, I really hope you've enjoyed this series. The next one's already under production. I look forward to seeing you then. On behalf of the entire staff, happy painting. God bless, my friend. This program is brought to you by Northlight Books, publisher of over 200 how-to books and videos for fine artists and graphic designers, and by Langnickel, manufacturers of selected artist brushes.